While the accordion looks pretty complicated from the front, if you look at it, you have a lot of buttons, a lot of keys and switches. It's very logical system. I would like to show you the right hand first. You have 105 buttons arranged in five rows, but actually the first and the fourth row are doubled, so it's the same. You even see that the fourth row is moving along if I push the first row, and also the second row is doubled in the fifth row. Same thing here. This is to, to have possibilities to make uh, alternative fingerings. So sometimes if you don't want to play the, the B natural here, you will play it here in order to get uh, a better fingering for yourself. The setup of the accordion in all those rows, all those rows are built up as diminished chords. So from one button to the other, it's always a minor third. For example, the third row starts the C, then you have the E flat, the F sharp, and the A, and then it repeats again. You have the second row is the C sharp, E, G, and B flat, and then it repeats again. And the first row is D, F, A flat, and B natural. So it's a very logical system. Uh, the half steps are then distributed like this. Half step higher would be here. Half step higher would be here. And then you jump to the third row again. It's here. So it's a very logical system. The left hand looks even more complicated as it has 120 buttons. And also it is a bit more complicated but also very, very logical. Um, we have actually two different manuals hidden in all those buttons. And I'm first gonna show you the manual which is most famous in, in folk music or in a lot of music where the accordion is being used. It's the so-called standard bass or stradella bass system. Uh, we have the first two rows are bass notes. So we have the deepest sounding reeds of the accordion. <laughs> You can play all kinds of scales. Then you have the third row is um, the chord of a major. The fourth row would be minor. The fifth row is a seventh chord. And the last row is a diminished chord. So you have in all those buttons in the first, in, in, in the outer rows, this one are chords, preset chords, and you can't change the voicing of the chord. So, for example, if you have a C major, it's always going to sound like this, the third is above. Or if you have the minor chord of C, also the E flat is up. Um, in another uh, key, for example, let's say E major, it would be the E in, in, on the top. So you can't change the voicing, which is quite a limitation for the, for the instrument. But it's been used a lot to play nice music like this. So you have, it's very practical. And uh, in all the folk cultures actually, where the accordion is being used, like in Austria where I come from, this system actually. Then we have this magical switch here, which is called the converter switch. And if we push this one, we have the same notes like in the left, in the right hand, we have from the deepest E, chromatically, up to the C sharp six, I think it is. And then if I change the register here, we even have C sharp eight, a half step higher than the piano. The range of the instrument itself is quite big. So if, if you go from the deepest register, it starts from the first E on the piano, which is this one. And then it goes up chromatically. Up to the 
the C sharp eight, which is half step higher than the than the piano. The accordion has quite a lot of registers, as you see. It's fifteen different registers, and it's combinations of four main registers. I'm going to show you the four main registers. We have one eight foot register. <laughs> Then we have another 8 foot register which has a more bright sound. We have a 16 foot register which is also mellow. And we have a 4 foot register which is bright again. The 4 foot register is the one which goes the highest, so it goes up to the C sharp 8. And the 16 foot register would sound has the lowest notes. <laughs> Very important is that that we have a big range within the one hand. We can we can go up to spreads of three octaves. So, for example, if I take this this F, one octave, two octaves, three octaves. So that would be the biggest spread which is possible with my hand. Some people have a bit bigger hand. Some people a bit less. And within that range, you can build quite big chords which. Uh, will have a very nice color like to keep in mind as a composer is if you write a big chord of let's say five tones and you want to bring in this, co this chord from niente. Let's take, for example, this chord. The tones will not appear at the same time because every read reacts a bit differently. So one read needs a bit more time to, to speak, another one is more quick. So. Also the decay of the tone. So the tones need different, uh, have a different timing. And this is different from chord to chord, different from instrument to instrument. And uh, there is no real rule behind that. Um, so you have two possibilities. Either you like it, that, that the tones don't come at the same time, or as an accordion player, you can also give a bit of an accent in the beginning so the tones will speak at the same time, like this, for example. If I play the same chord from Niente. The tones come in at different times. So as we have the same tones in both hands, on the right and the left side of the accordion, I would suggest not to write always like for piano that you have the lowest tones in the left hand and the uh, right hand would have the high notes. Of course it's possible that, that we combine like this. But you could also turn it around, you could have the high notes in the left hand and uh, the low tones in the right hand. Stream like this. Or you could, for example, 
uh, you could combine the deep bass notes of the stradella bass with higher notes of the melody bass. So you have a very open, open sound in the left hand, and the right hand would fill in the middle. So you have all kinds of possibilities to spread the sound more. Because if you write only low notes left, high notes right, it's gonna sound a bit flat sometimes. So I suggest you to try out different things, different combinations. The character of the instrument changes a lot if you spread the sound more, if you, if you play a bit with the possibilities of the accordion. A very nice effect is as well if you use the same tones in both hands. So we have a kind of stereo effect. Something like this. So the instrument is a stereo instrument. We have two manuals which are, we have possibilities to really combine them, intertwine them, spread them, smash them together. So it's a lot of possibilities. Vibrato is something which is very natural for the accordion as the instrument is very close to the, to the body. So everything that you do, everything that you move has a direct impact on the sound. So if you waggle something, the sound will already vibrate. So you can do it with the hand, you can do it with the leg, you can do it with the chin. Looks a bit weird, but it works. Um, you can do it with the right hand, or you could even manipulate the bellow directly. Vibrato can be fast or slow. Everything that we are talking about vibrato is in the accordion actually not a pitch vibrato like with string instruments or with singers. Uh, it is a intensity vibrato or a dynamic vibrato. So the sound gets louder and, and less, a bit like vibraphone vibrato. So this is very, very flexible way to, 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 to change to change the sound of, of one tone or one one chord. What you can also use is rhythmical vibrati or rhythmical beatings on the on the on the, on the instrument. <laughs> But it is also possible to do some kind of pitch vibrato with the accordion. If you make very small glissandi, tone glissandi on the, on, the, on the instrument, it sounds a bit like a pitch vibrato. Of course not as elegant on, as on the strings and not so flexible, but it can be a very nice effect actually. Um, it can be even more extreme, like... And this is because we can bend the tones of the accordion. Um, if you, for example, take one of the buttons 
and you raise it partially and at the same time you increase the pressure of the bellow, the tone will drop. So in this way you can bend the tones. And this works mostly in the deep, in the low ranges of the accordion. It works pretty well. In the higher registers, it's a bit harder to hear it because the smaller reeds will not be as flexible as the deep ones. But it's still like a quarter tone difference between the right pitch and the bended pitch. <laughs> By this technique, you can also have a very nice effect which uh, produces some kind of beating or oscillating effect. If I, for example, take one tone in the left hand and I play the same tone in the right hand and I bend the right hand a bit. kind of beating in the middle so the two frequencies are fighting against each other Tone bending or the tone glissando is always connected with a kind of crescendo. So keep in mind that if uh, if you want to make a glissando on one tone, you will also have to increase the uh, bellow pressure, which means that if you have a, a chord in the left hand, for example, like this, and you bend the right hand, kind of a crescendo on the chord as well um, because you have to make a bit of more pressure. Or the so-called ricochet, ricochet, which is um, achieved by in, out in, if you do it rhythmically. You can do triplets, you can do also quadruplets. And so on. So you can use the, the bellow as a yeah, rhythmical element. The accordion is a pretty noisy instrument actually, so always when I record it, I hear a lot of sounds which I don't want to hear actually. But as a composer, you can also use those sounds as part of your composition. So everything that, like this, clicking of the keys, or the register switches. You can use what is also being used a lot is the so-called air button. This air button was invented actually to to close and open the bellow in a you know in a way that people won't hear it. But it's been used quite a lot to 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 yeah kind of 
do breathing of the instrument like wind or like heavy breathing <laughs> Another percussive sound would be, of course, hitting the bellow. Or the corpus of the instrument. Or all kinds of scratching noises. <laughs> 